Hey, Dan here from Home Meets Road with one of our RV campground reviews. This one is all about our stay at Medina Lake RV Campground, which is a thousand trails. But before we get started, here are the timestamps for this video. Issues is going to be a recap. I'm actually going to be talking about the issues in every section. So yeah, it's that bad. Let's get started with the park's location. Medina Lake is located in the middle of nowhere, Texas. This says it's an hour from downtown San Antonio, but we are talking about an hour of back road, stop and go, one lane, stuck behind a 20 mile an hour, broke down Ford, blowing diesel in your face kind of road. And by the time you get to the park, you better have some Jack Daniels for your cup. Yeah. Which brings me straight into arrival. By the time you get here, especially if you got a big rig, I'd say anything over 12 feet tall and 38 feet long, your nerves are going to be wrecked already because there are some tight turns and you might hit some things on the way here. But be prepared to spend at least 30 minutes at the office. So when you get here, you're going to make a left-hand turn into the parking lot at the office and wait. There was only one other gentleman in front of me checking in and it took me 30 minutes to get in and through the gate. Park layout. Now it looks like a great map, just like all thousand trails, but pay a little more close attention. You see all the little different color coordinations they have because their power is all over the place. Some have full hookups, some have not. And it's a big mix match of everything going on. And they don't even show you the good part. Most of the green sites are actually red, as in red you cannot use, because there are some issues with the sites, and there are a ton of them. I would say a good 20% of this park right now, when we were there at least, was not usable because of some kind of power issue. But hey, you get to pick your own site, so there's that. Amenities. According to Thousand Trails websites, these are the amenities this park has. We did not see any of them because everything is closed. Now, yes, that is COVID's fault, not theirs. So the only thing I would say is that you have water. If you have water toys, this is the park to go to. There's definitely something to do, but anything else? Yeah, no. Our site, hey, <laughs> yeah. So you get to pick your own site at this park, but we could not find one. Our rig is only 30 feet long and 10 feet tall, but for some reason, we just couldn't find one. Either because, hey, there was somebody there, or that site was not available due to power issues, or it was awkward and not long enough for us, or there was a tree and the list just keeps on and on. By the time we finally got through looking through the entire park, the sun was going down and I said, screw it. So I pulled into site C50, which we were not supposed to go into. I called the office, they were already closed. I called the ranger, nobody answered. So yeah, again, I said, screw it, poured myself a drink and called it a night. The next morning we were greeted by the local wildlife, which sounds awesome until you try to make some food. Next thing you know, 20 of its friends show up and everybody is literally in your campsite trying to steal food off your Blackstone. So we pulled in late last night and we were told to be in a yellow spot, as in the electrical box be yellow. This one's green. 
So we waited until checkout time and then looked around the park to see if anything opened up and we found F27. Now F27 was actually a really great spot. I would say it's long enough for almost any rig. However, if you are going to be taller than 12 feet, you're going to hit some branches. Hookups. Now, site C50 is 30 amp and water. Now, for some odd reason, we were told we're not supposed to be in these sites, but it worked just fine. And F27 was 30 amp full hookups, no issues here. When it comes to connectivity, we have both Verizon and AT&T. Both worked, however, you can see that in site C50, Verizon was doing pretty well, especially on upload. But by the time we got to F27, it dropped to near to nothing, and that's because of the tree coverage. Let's recap the issues. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up so it will be recommended to others. And let's answer that all important question, would we stay here again? And I'm assuming by now you've already guessed it, we are going to be a hard pass. Uh, yeah, no, I honestly do not see a reason ever to come to Medina Lake unless you live in San Antonio and you're just trying to get out of town for the weekend. That's it. That's all I have for Medina Lake. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to answer it. And if you haven't already, we are a family of three living full time in our rebuilt vintage travel trailer. We share the good, the bad and the ugly of building your own RV and living the nomadic life. Consider subscribing and we hope to see you down the road. Thanks for watching and happy travels. Mm -hmm.